Hi, I'm Louise Grant from Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Angelique Moselle Robbins, who is the internationally known channel for the angelic realm named Gashikta. This is uh, another in our long series of videos where we are able to interview Angel and talk about her daily life experience as a channel, which is a most profound gift to be a messenger for God. Uh, so, Angel, glad you're here. I'm <laughs> glad I'm here too. Uh, as we're continuing on, uh, we've talked about what it feels like when Gashikta is moving into your body and the immenseness of the energy that they bring as this angelic realm. When they are within you, you've said that it's almost as though your egoic self moves into a small space, like almost a cubby hole, yeah. and they take over your body. Yeah. Well, I have seen other channels over the last 20 years. You know, there are some uh, Esther Hicks who channels <coughs> Abraham, Sheila Gallette who channels Theo, many others. Um, some of those channels are what I would phrase to be not well integrated, meaning that their physical body looks and sounds sometimes quite awkward when this angelic realm is moving through. They may have their eyes closed or face contortions. Their voice may sound quite awkward. They may not have use of their limbs. And certainly what has impressed me so much having studied with Gashikta and you for the last three years is how completely congruent and integrated you are for, we think the average person, when you hear Angel, and then she sings a sacred song that Gashikta has given her that brings them in, once they begin speaking, the typical person may not even notice the difference because they sound and look just like you. Can you explain a bit how that integration <clears throat> has worked so well for you? Well, I can explain what I know about yes. it. Yes. But the rest of it, I would ask Gashikta okay. because I feel that Gashikta has a better understanding of it than I do. Mm -hmm. But they say that I was grafted in, that, that those 13 years of study that I had with, with Michael, Archangel really, Michael, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. really changed my kind of level of existence, I guess, and made the, the harmonizing process, the integrating culmination more smooth. So probably if I had started this type of channeling when I had had my near-death experience, it probably would have been a lot more rocky. So that's pretty much how I understand that. Okay. The, the other thing is that I practice a really special type of Qigong. It's called Pangu Shengong, created by Master Owen Wei. And as soon as I learned that Qigong form, and started practicing it diligently, channeling became a lot easier for me. So I believe that Gashikta is, is life force and that we are meant to be strong life force, but we're usually not. And by practicing that Qigong form, it has very much strengthened my life force, making me more making my body mm -hmm. more congruent with that energy. Very good. It makes it so enjoyable to have a conversation with you and Gashikta because of that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when you are living your daily life, you've got two sons. One is a very young toddler and then your life partner, Keith, 
And we will uh, soon interview Keith as well. He is an intuitive medical healer himself. He also is a student with Gashita. Um, but when you're living your daily life, are you aware that Gashikta is present? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Gashikta has become probably like a, a kid probably feels this way with their quote imaginary friends. Mm -hmm. But often I think those friends aren't imaginary. <laughs> right. And that's kind of what it's like for me. I always have my friends. How do you know they're there? I can just, I can feel them. You feel the energy of them. It's or like I can feel the, uh, there's a certain type of crisp presence that Kashikta has mm -hmm. and I can always feel it around me. Do you feel it within your body or is it like an energetic field outside of you? Like both. And do they respectfully keep their distance while you're just living your daily life? Or uh, yeah, that work? yeah, it's not like uh, I asked them once. I was like, "Do you guys watch me poop?" <laughs> and they were like, um, "No, that we don't watch you." They were like, "We don't watch you. That we're not watchers. We're not sitting there like with eyes watching. Uh -huh. We exist." And. We ex they said they said they're drawn to intention. So, if I have a question, and see, I'm talking to them constantly. It's just like, in your mind. Oh yeah, yeah, all the time. So I'm always calling them to me as well, because I share my thoughts, I share my ideas, I ask their their opinions, I ask. So there's a constant dialogue. So I'm kind of. Okay, I mean, I just leave. Yeah, it's just so so interesting for me. So I know you are working on creating uh, a, a larger platform for your business. So when you are asking them questions, I mean, would you just in your mind say, "Hey guys, I'm thinking about creating this webinar, what do you think the topic should be? I mean, is that, would you have a thought like that and then you're hearing an answer or feeling it? Yeah, or? yeah. And it's usually feeling it. Um, I don't necessarily hear it. Mm -hmm. And anyway, I think that a lot of times hearing is, it's our own egoic mind talking to ourselves a lot of the time. So I've noticed with Gashita, they much more prefer to kind of show me. Mm -hmm. So through the way that I feel or through the, like, uh, kind of like I'm drawn to something, mm -hmm. uh, kind of like inspiration, you know? Um, so it'll feel like it's my idea. Okay. Or I'll feel just magnetized to something. But in, in regard to like a webinar, uh-huh. It would, I would feel drawn to a subject. So if they were, if I was saying, what should we do this webinar about? Then maybe I wouldn't get a feeling or an answer right then, but maybe 10 minutes later when I'm not thinking about it anymore, I'll get something like, ooh, you know, the art of self-belief would be cool. So it's like, it's like it's my idea, but is it? Is it my idea? Mm -hmm. Okay, um, I know that they have told us in class that they use your library, your vocabulary in order as they're speaking and perhaps they can explain this to us as well in another video, but I, I'm assuming that's why some of their personality is very resonant of your personality. Mm. Is, that, is that your understanding of it? Well, the way they say it is that they use my data bank. So, uh, probably just 
having a relationship with just Kashikta without it coming through me, I'm sure would feel different mm -hmm. than it does coming through me because as far as I understand it, I'm definitely flavoring that whole thing mm -hmm. because they're accessing my data bank, as they say. So that's they're accessing my sense of humor, they're accessing my ways of thinking, they're accessing my sarcasm, they're accessing my vocabulary. But when they're coming through, you can tell a lot of times that it's not me because they will use different words than I do. Mm -hmm, definitely. And they will say things differently, pronounce things differently. And even the sense of humor that comes through is different than mine. Mm -hmm. So I definitely feel that Gashikta has their own sense of humor. They definitely do. Because even, you know, I said that usually I don't hear, but sometimes I do hear. Mm -hmm. And when I do hear them, they are funny. Yeah. They really are. Mm -hmm. So, and, and they, they, they are kind of, they have their own sense of sarcasm in a way, you know? Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> so I think it's both. Okay. Yeah. And how do they describe who they are to you? Well, <laughs> yeah. They say that they're the angelic realm. And they say that we don't know what that means. Mm -hmm. that, that humans are completely ignorant to what that actually means. And that they're energetic beings. I had a conversation with a, a Christian friend once who said, well, you, you know, you can't possibly be speaking to an angel because angels have their own bodies. And they say that's untrue. That's not, that's not an accurate way to think about the angelic realm. So they say that they are, have been assigned to humanity mm -hmm. since the beginning of humanity which is a lot longer than we have record of. They say that they're assigned by the big picture. They say that they know more about us than we do. They know more about how we're constructed. And they also say that they're the fairy realm, which is how they explain the fairy realm is the, the energy that takes care of earth. The, the beings that take care of earth mm -hmm. so we've got kind of a conglomeration going on they they quit talking about being the fairy realm because i kept getting really weird feedback mm -hmm. from people like fairies you know and i think they just got tired of <laughs> talking about it <laughs> but that's what they mm -hmm. that's what they say they are so if someone called them god would they say yes we are God. They'd say we're a part of God. And they, they say that they're a divine intelligence. Okay. So what I notice is that they're always trying to, and you probably notice this too, they're always trying to get us to think differently about all of it. Mm -hmm. That definitely we all have some type of construct that we've created through whatever religion we grew up with and who knows what all contributed to how we perceive it all. Mm -hmm. But that constantly the way they describe themselves, the way they describe God, the way they describe earth and humans and all of that, they're constantly trying to make us think differently, broaden our understanding, mm -hmm. stop making everything look like us. And, and really start to understand the world through energy. Beautiful. Okay. Thank you. That's all for now. Thanks for joining us. And be sure to look for us in another ongoing series with Angelique Mazel Robbins, the channel for the angelic realm, Gashikta. <laughs>